Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Um, in this video, we're going to go over the components that I'll be using to bench test the Acorn setup. Eventually, we'll integrate them all together. We'll be doing a dry erase board exercise showing how we wire each component, and then we'll come to the bench and we'll wire it up physically. And then if we can test that subsystem, we'll do that. Trying to break it all down in its simplest form. And then we'll go over the calculations for making sure that our travels are, are accurate. So let's get going. Okay, here are the components that we're going to use for bench testing Acorn. Um, we'll have a fully functional axis. That's what this is. It's a linear slide, has a THK bearing block on it, linear guide rail here. It's got a ball screw. Um, I've got a limit switch on it. Kind of crude, but it'll work for home limit. And I've got a 12 tooth MXL pulley on the SNEMA 23 stepper, and I got a 24 tooth uh, MXL pulley on the ball screw. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a NEMA 23 stepper. I have the documentation on the stepper motor. I, I buy my steppers from Automation Technology. I've had good luck with them. The price is very reasonable, and they give really good service. This particular motor has eight wires on it. I've configured it as bipolar parallel. So what it is is you're paralleling the coils on top of each other. And uh, this gives a really good description on what you need to do. I've already done that. And I have a red and green on my A coil wired up. There's red and green. I have black and white on my B coil. So that's already set up. We won't be doing that. Um, on the note of steppers and drives, I mean, there's so many of them out there. It's hard to go over each one of them. I'd suggest that uh, if you need a little bit of help or advice, um, post, a, post a question to the Centroid CNC user forums. Um, if you can, give the stepper motor make and model number and cut sheet, and then your stepper driver, if you've got a cut sheet on it, post it as well. I know that's a, a whole nother uh, issue for the DIYers is how do I choose stepper drives and stepper motors? So, and that's almost impossible to discuss here. Um, what I want to do here is integrate all these components to have a, a functioning axis so we can demonstrate. Of course, we've got Acorn. This is a Microkinetics uh, stepper driver that Bevo lent me. Um, Bevo recently upgraded his Microkinetics mill um, and put some Lead Shine clone stepper drivers in it. Uh, Microkinetics is good enough to have all their documentation posted online, so I was able to download the documentation for the for this Microkinetics stepper drive. That's that. It's configurable. Uh, I think it does half step and full step. It also has dip switches to select the current of the motor and the current in bipolar parallel is three amps. So we should be fine. That, that microconnect stepper driver can handle that. This is the stepper power supply. It's a 24 volt power supply. It's way more than enough that we need to drive this little bitty NEMA 23 stepper motor. This is the original 24 volt power supply that came with Acorn. I will not be using it. Instead, I'll be using this one. And the reason being, I need five volts for the logic circuitry and the stepper driver. Um, I like to buy these power supplies. It's a Meanwell power supply from Jameco, J-A-M-E-C-O.com. Um, they're very inexpensive. I think this one was less than 20 bucks. But the point being, it has multiple outputs. It has a five volt output for my logic on the stepper driver. It has 24 volt output to power up Acorn and uh, use for the, the limit switch circuitry here. Um, it actually has two other outputs that I won't be needing, but uh, I think it was about 20 bucks or less. So in my opinion, it's better just to get a power supply with the outputs that you need. Um, control circuitry doesn't require a lot of current, so the power supplies can be small. Um, but uh, you could certainly use a, a dropping resistor to drop 24 volts to what you need. But again, I think it's just, it's just better that you buy a power supply with the voltage outputs that you need. Um, we've got an e-stop button with normally closed contact blocks. Uh, and we have this limit switch, which is already wired normally using the normally closed contacts. I've um, already posted a video as to the reasoning why you should use normally closed contacts. 
Um, and when we build this, we'll, we'll go over that. And you'll understand by watching what happens when we don't have, uh, when we try and use a normally open contact. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I'm missing. Oh, yes, there is. Um, having the cut sheets for your stepper motors, having the cut, cut sheet for your stepper drivers, and most importantly, having a schematic, and you can download the full set of schematics from Centroid's resource page uh, for Acorn on uh, giving you an idea how to hook things up. Um, this happens to be a lead shine. It's not exactly like this microkinetics uh, drive, but it goes over quite a bit of the basics. So um, I'll be using this for reference. Um, I'll try and do a lot of this on the dry erase board first, and then we'll come and hook it up. And uh, we'll also be doing the calculations from the uh, steps per, per motor revolution and then the uh, calculations for the screw. And I know that's something that would be of interest to everybody. I think that about covers the overall project. I've already got a CNC PC set up here. I've already done a video on setting it up. We've already done the bench test with Acorn, so that's done. Again, that was uh, a previous video. So we have a PC ready to go. All right, so uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video.